So this is our second session, but really our first true start to this Python uh, bootcamp. So let me make sure that I can come back here and hit screen share. Perfect. Hopefully y'all can all see my screen. Let me come to manage participants so I can confirm. I have hands up. So let's take a couple of questions very quickly. Is, were the hands up? Put your hands down if you don't have a question, please. So Sayub, was there a quick question? Your hand is up. Nope, there's not. Okay, great. Yeah, your hand is up again. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're learning it. It's all right, Sayub. So here we go. Uh, module one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna scroll through some of this quickly. You can read this on your own. Uh, what are we talking about here? What is a program? I think most, most, of, you, most of you know what programs are. Um, but what you may not know is ultimately, can someone uh, unmute their mic and tell me, what does a computer actually understand? Programming languages? Good try. Uh, someone else, and actually raise your hand, please. Um, but no, don't raise your hand. Just anyone. You know. um, binary? Sayub said binary. Uh, Rebecca, do you have an answer as well? I said binary. Okay, great. So yeah, short answer is computers are quite, gosh, what's the, what, is there a more appropriate word? They're just not intelligent. Computers only understand what most people would say is binary, meaning zeros and ones. In fact, the computer only understands, we say binary because it's easier for us to understand that. Uh, binary, like a binary system, base two, like decimals, base 10, our counting system that we use. We say binary because it makes it easier for us, but in fact, computers only understand electrical signals up and down, high and low, on and off, which it's easy for us to refer to that pictorially on a, on a, like on a, within a textbook as zero or one, where one is on or, or high or zero is off or a low electrical signal. That's all a computer understands. So in fact, we have what is called machine language where if you look at the bottom of my screen here, these zeros and ones, that is computer code. And thank God that we're not gonna learn that because I would absolutely not be a computer science professor, nor would I be a programmer. Uh, I think many would go insane if we had to program with only zeros and ones. Uh, but there is a course that I teach at the college level, which we actually break down the Java or Python commands into the lower level assembly level language commands. And then further, we break down those commands into their machine language equivalent, meaning into the zeros and ones that are actually understood by the computer. So it's important to know the computer really just understands zeros and ones. And I feel privileged that you don't have to code in zeros and ones because that would be quite challenging. Uh, and I mute my microphone every now and then if I have uh, my chronic cough that I've been dealing with, again, well before Corona. Uh, so then we have assembly language. Assembly language, just for you to know, and again, there's no testing here, this is just for your knowledge. Assembly language came about because people realized that there's no way it's not sustainable to program with zeros and ones. So they came up with assembly language, which think of it as a programming language, where if we wanted to add what, what was inside this variable, plus whatever's inside this variable, and we wanted to add those two things together and save it into this thing, and then here is the command. That's not the easiest to maybe parse through and understand, but it's certainly a lot better than this, right? And so assembly level language was a huge jump in the right direction. And then that language was then translated into machine language by an assembler, for the computer to then run. Because again, the computer only understands zeros and ones. And that's quite impressive if you think about it. This Zoom, the software that we're using, the, the ability to open up your browser and search the internet. In the end, it all breaks down to zeros and ones that are running across your computer processor, which is the heart of your machine. I mean, that, that's wildly impressive. Um, all that said, uh, anecdotally, uh, that's really about the limit of what I want to know about it, because I'm not the hardware person. The hardware person, the electrical engineer, uh, the computer engineer, they want to know about those details. Uh, but Sayub, just give me one moment, please. 
but that's in a different course for those who are interested in that hardware. Uh, so moving ahead and we get to high level languages, which includes Python, Java, C++, C Sharp, and a whole list of languages that you've heard of, where now it looks closer to English-like uh, language. So I think many of you could recognize that this is the uh, computing the area of a circle with a radius of five, because we know that the area of a circle is pi r squared. So here's approximately pi, 3.14159, so really 3.1416 maybe, but 3.14 times five times five would give us the area of a circle. And in many languages, that's exactly what that would look like. And we use the uh, star, which is shift eight, uh, within the languages as our multiplication symbol to multiply two numbers uh, against each other. Uh, let's answer two questions very quickly, but uh, then I might actually, if I see a hand and I don't wanna answer the question, I'll just tell you to hold that question, but go ahead, because I wanna give us that opportunity briefly. Uh, say you, go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't want to ask a question. I was just stretching. Okay, well then please lower your hand. Ayub, go ahead. Say you, please lower your hand. Uh, first say because the area of a circle is pi r squared, right? Why would we need to multiply? It, it, like, it does simplify to five squared, but could we make it five squared times 3.1? Of course, you, you, but we're not going to get caught up on those details and semantics right now. Uh, but yes, this is just showing the, uh, the purpose of the slide is just to show you, uh, and you can lower your hand and then mute your mic. The purpose of the slide, you is just to show you how a high level language looks like something that we would all understand. So I could show this, I could show this line of code because it's code to probably anyone and they can guess that, yeah, that's calculating the area of, hmm. And if I didn't give this text above, if I erase that, most people who are in high school would be able to say, well, it's five times five, they'd recognize this pi, and they'd say they wouldn't know what the colon or the semicolon is here for, uh, but they would recognize that as calculating the area of a circle. So therefore, the goal of the slide is achieved. As far as the semantics, if you wanna uh, use some other way of multiplying the five and five together, five raised to the second power, uh, that those are uh, all details that are not, uh, important with respect to uh, what's covered here. But yeah, you, absolutely. You could calculate five squared in a variety of ways. Uh, Sean, you have a question? And then we'll move on. So the computer converts the binary into a thing that displays that we can understand? Uh, good question, Sean, that's correct. The computer is able to understand binary and then based on that, it's able to uh, perform its appropriate actions. So, Ultimately, the computer only, go ahead and please lower your hand and uh, unmute your mic. So ultimately, the computer is only understanding binary. Like when you actually open up a computer, tear it apart, uh, if you could look into the processor, it's just, and again, this is not what we're covering here, so I'm gonna say this very quickly and then move on. I don't wanna gloss over it, but due to time, that's outside the scope of our discussion. Um, when you look inside the computer, uh, if you could look inside a processor, it's just a series of gates, uh, and you would say, what is a gate? You can look it up. Uh, type into Google and you're off time, logical gates. And uh, it's where you have two electrical signals coming into a gate, and those electrical signals will be anded together or ORed together. Again, this is outside the scope of this discussion. Uh, but the takeaway here is that the computer only understands ones and zeros. And that's wildly impressive to know that uh, we're able to do everything that we do, and it all just boils down to ones and zeros. So the purpose here is to understand what are the high-level languages, and we're learning Python, which is a high-level language. Uh, so I want to give you a couple of terms to understand. I mentioned assembly, but we're not going to even talk about that again for the next seven weeks. Uh, compiling is something important for you to understand, even though Python is not a compiled language. So when you have a high level language, such as in C++ or C Sharp or the C language or many other languages, you're typing in this high level language, you're writing your program in this English-like language, but in the end, that program needs to get translated to zeros and ones. How does that happen? It happens by way of a translator that translates your code into zeros and ones. If all you remember is that translator is known as a compiler, I'm perfectly satisfied. So what is a compiler? 
It's the translator for our simple purposes. The compiler is the translator that translates the Python code or the C code or the Java code or the C sharp code into zeros and ones. Of course, there's more to it than that, but that's all that we need to know for our purposes. Uh, Python is a general purpose language. Uh, someone asked earlier, what all can you code into Python? I think the, another way um, to answer that question would say, well, what can you not code in Python? Python uh, is just a fantastic language. I have coded, I have taught the introductory course in many different languages. When I was at UCF, I taught it in the C language, uh, which is a, a little, a li much harder as a first language, but that's what they chose. Um, I've taught as a first language Java. Uh, I've also taught now Python. And uh, Python is definitely the best language to start with, with respect to, it's not Overall, I can't say the best. There's pros and cons everywhere. But one of the values of Python is the learning curve is essentially flat. It is easy to jump right into Python and begin coding versus other languages. Uh, the learning curve can be you know, average or even a bit steep. So Python is uh, one of the most popular and uh, the most widely used languages of our time, along with Java and some of the other ones we've mentioned. Uh, what's different about Python, uh, to, I want to cover this briefly because it is important, is that Python, pardon me, Python is not a compiled language. And I mentioned that compile is how we translate your high-level language into zeros and ones. Uh, and that process happens when you've written your entire program, then you compile your program into zeros and ones. There's a button you're going to basically click, okay? Python is not a compiled language. You do not need to write the entire program and then have the entire program from A to, A to Z compiled to zeros and ones. Python instead is an interpreted language, which means that line by line, it's actually interpreted and then put into or translated into machine code. Maybe not the most important uh, difference for in your mind, but it is very important and you'll see how that comes together later. And then Python is object oriented. That's all I'm gonna say on that. I'm actually teaching uh, in the morning, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, two sessions of object oriented programming. So I'm well versed in that, but that is again, outside the scope. Python is an object oriented language. Uh, we're not gonna learn too much of that in this particular bootcamp. Not gonna go over the Python history. Uh, it is important to know that languages have versions uh, because as the developers of the language realize then they say, you know, currently a programmer can type this particular command. And when they do that, it results in this. And then years later, they, they realize and they say, hmm, we can change and make a new command that it'll result in something better or faster or easier for the programmer. So as a language develops and the developers think of new commands and new, new ways of of augmenting that language and improving it, then you get a new version that comes out. I think that's the easiest way to explain that. So right now, actually, uh, we're at Python, I believe it's 3.8, uh, but it doesn't matter if, as long as you're one of the new versions. So how do we install Python? Uh, that's an important thing we wanna jump right into today because we wanna install Python, install our IDE, and uh, start doing some programming right off the bat. Uh, so installing Python is normally a two-step process. You would, and this is the same thing for any language. You would normally install the language. So, and don't do this. Again, if you, if you jump ahead, you try to get ahead, you can make a mistake, so I don't want you to do that. Uh, but normally, if I were to go, if I wanted to install Java, for example, I would type in Java uh, SDK, and I would arrive at Oracle, and I would come to their download, and I would download and install Java. Or if I wanted to install, you know, C, uh, I would come, I'd look at the steps for installing C and I would do that. And the same thing for install Python. I would normally go to python.org. Do not do this. I won't be able to help you if you do this. Uh, I would normally go to python.org and I would then be able to install Python. So there's a two-step process which we are not going to do. We're gonna make it easier, okay? But the two-step process is traditionally install the language, and when you install the language, what that means is your computer is able to understand Python. Because by default, 
if you have a PC for sure, your computer does not understand Python by default. Your computer just, it, if you were to type in Python commands and try to run a program, your computer is going to think you're crazy. You're nuts. It doesn't understand. So the first step is to install Python so your computer can say, hey, I know what Python is. And the second step is to install an integrated development environment, an IDE. So I'd like to explain what is an IDE. And uh, to do so, I'll ask you a question. Uh, someone raise your hand so I can call on you. Raise your hand if you can answer the following. What is Microsoft Excel? I know it's a simple question, but I want to get you involved. And I'm going to try to call on students who have not answered. So several of you raise your hand, please. Or I'll just call on someone. Now, that's always fun. Uh, Imran, if you can uh, go ahead and so everyone else can lower your hands. Imran, if you can lower your hand as well, but answer the question. What is Microsoft Excel? I don't use it a lot, but from what I know, it's part of like a whole series of things, Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, okay. and... So do you know yeah. what, what you do with Microsoft Excel? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's for um, sheets, like sheets Perfect. like- Perfect, it's uh, for spreadsheets. It's for yeah, spreadsheets. spreadsheets, perfect. So if you want to make a spreadsheet, okay, with some equations, then you would use Microsoft Excel. And Ron, you can lower your hand. Uh, someone else uh, chime in and tell me what is the purpose of Adobe Photoshop? Someone else raise your hand. Nate, what's the purpose of Adobe Photoshop? Uh, it's meant to edit photos. Yep, so Adobe Photoshop is a program used to edit photos. Excel is a program used to make spreadsheets. Uh, one more, what is Google Chrome? I'm trying, to, I'm trying to choose different people. Uh, pardon me. Uh, and I appreciate, don't stop raising your hands. I want to, be to uh, get everyone involved. So I see, uh, Sean, what is Google Chrome? Google Chrome is a search browser. So Google Chrome is a browser. Okay. So go ahead, Sean, and uh, mute. Perfect. So Google Chrome is a browser. It's a program that allows you to go browse the internet. So we understand programs have different purposes. So what is an IDE? An IDE is a program that allows you to program. That's the, I think the simplest way to go about it. What is, a, what is Excel for? Well, it's a program that allows you to make spreadsheets. What is Photoshop? It's a program that allows you to edit photos or, or do cool photo stuff. What is an IDE? It's a program that allows you to program and it allows you to uh, compile or interpret your code. So that's an IDE. And so the IDE that I use for this introductory course is Thani. So all of you can click on this link for Thani.org. And it brings us to this page. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. You're going to download either if you're on a Windows machine, you click Windows or Mac or Linux. So I see that there's someone chatting. Interesting. I'm not sure if Rebecca that's going, if Becky that's applying to us or not, uh, but we'll see. Um, that would be great. So here, um, you click on Windows, and you can download Thani. I'm not going to install it myself because I already have it installed on this machine. Uh, so if you have Mac, you would click on Mac or Linux. So at this point, you need to go ahead and download Thani. I'm going to wait about a minute. Everyone should download Thani and install it on their machine. And if you need some help, uh, someone else in your household to help you do so, uh, that's fantastic. Imran, we have a quick question, and then Nate. Go ahead, Imran. My apologies. I still had my hand raised up from when you asked what Google Chrome No was. issue. No issue. You can lower your hand. Nate? Okay, so just to confirm, like, you do want us to do this now? Yes. I would like everyone now to go ahead and install Thani. So download. Hit the download button. Nate, you can mute your mic. Uh, download Thani by clicking the appropriate either Windows if you're on a Windows-based machine, click on the Mac link if you're on a Mac machine, or click on Linux if you're using Linux. Most of you will be Windows or Mac. So click on that, 
that's going to download it. And then I, I'm still screen sharing, so you can see, uh, I'm not going to install it, but if I were, I would come click on where it shows that it downloaded and it would want to, uh, I'm gonna hit, uh, I don't know why it says this, but I would hit run anyway. I actually haven't seen that before for Thani, uh, but yes, Thani is a safe program to download. This is arguably the best educational IDE for Python. It is a fantastic educational IDE. For, it is not a professional IDE for Python. Uh, at the end of this boot camp, I can happily recommend other IDEs, but this is what we'll use because it is easy if you just double click uh, and you install that two-step process of installing Python and then installing the IDE, it's in one simple step for newbies. So it's perfect. So uh, hit run anyway, follow the prompts, install Thani. And I'm gonna wait about a minute, but when you're done, you should pop up and get a program. Okay, and if you can, after you've installed, yeah, Musab, go ahead, you have a question? Musab Akari, you have your hand raised. Do you have a question? Yes, do I have to yes. open the Thani? Um, so go ahead and mute your mic, please. Uh, do you have to open Thani? So after you download it, you should install it. And then when you install it, yes, go ahead and open it. So you're gonna be a screen like this. Mine will look different than yours because I've just edited my preferences to change it to a dark mode and other things, which of course I'm sure many of you will figure out how to do and play with. So uh, when, you, when you download it and you install it, uh, after you install it, you should open it and you should be at this screen where it says untitled in the upper left, you know, because we have not saved the file we're currently working in. And uh, if not, even if I hit close here, I can hit file new and I'm here ready to start a new Python program. So if I can get a show of hands once everyone has actually uh, and successfully installed Thani, keep your hand, no, not a hands, thumbs up. If you can put a thumbs up in the participant window. Um, once you have successfully installed Thani and you are here ready to make your first program. And please keep your thumbs up if you, if you don't mind so I can actually wait till the entire list is done. And I guess I should have uh, told uh, my daughter to not install Thani. Mariam, did you install Thani? Because it was already there. It was already installed, I just opened it. Okay, love you. So we're missing uh, several students. Ayub, Farha, Imran, Kulsum, Nate, Sean, Ryan, Rebecca, oh, or Rebecca. Sorry, my laptop was a little bit slow, so it's gonna take a little bit. It's okay. And allow me to encourage you as well. Um, this is something, just a habit. So keep your thumbs up everyone, please, so I can be able to see. Uh, Nate, are you still installing? Okay, because uh, this is a very small program. So the, the, we use a term in, in a computer science for software, we say like a lightweight program. This is an extremely lightweight, small program. Uh, so even if someone has an old computer, it, it installs pretty slow. I'm sorry, it installs pretty fast, except um, if you have not done something in a while. And I find that a lot of my college students uh, do not, they themselves, they do not reboot their machines very often. Um, I asked, when was the last time you rebooted? And they, they'll, some will say, what's that? Others will say, oh, two weeks ago. Um, you should, just like you sleep every day and you would not be uh, quite 
you would not be the of the highest levels of efficiency if you didn't sleep. Uh, the next morning you might be struggling. Uh, your computer struggles. Uh, your reboot, consider it as uh, allowing your computer to get a full night's sleep. Uh, so try to reboot your computer uh, at least daily uh, prior to using it, uh, would be my recommendation. We have a hand up from Imran, go ahead. But everyone else, please keep your thumbs up because I'd like to wait. I'm gonna give it, if we have to, up to three more minutes. It should not take that long, but I'd rather the famous no student left behind. Uh, so please keep your thumbs up so I can follow. We have Ridwan, we have Becky, Sean, Sayub, Nate, um, another Ayub, and Farha who have not uh, raised their thumbs yet. So Imran, can you please, uh, you have your hand up, Imran, did you have a question? So I'm lowering his hand. <clears throat> Sean, are you installing? Me? Yes, I'm still installing it. Okay, so we will wait about two or three minutes and I need to go get a nice another background. So I do love my live background here where I'm at the beach, but let's see. What other background can I choose in the meantime? And how much time do we have? I don't know if there's a timer anywhere. If anyone sees a timer, unless they they took off the timer, but I uh, have not gotten that official message because the, the unlimited Zoom accounts that Zoom is uh, allowing, even on the free accounts is for K through 12. Uh, and since I am a higher education account, uh, the best of my knowledge, that was not going to be unlimited, but they may have changed that recently. So that would be great news. Uh, we have a hand from Ayub and Imran. So go uh, ahead. For the, for the initial settings, we just, do we leave it as standard or uh, it says like uh, Raspberry Pi? I would leave all of the standards. Uh, that's a good question. So when you're just, I would just hit next, 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 finish. I would not change any of the settings. Imran, you have your hand up? Yeah, sorry. Everything for me froze. I had to close Zoom and it still doesn't want to download. Okay. N not sure what I can say about that, except I would encourage you to reboot your computer. Uh, yeah, I still see uh, you are still with us. So hopefully you're hearing uh, this. Imran, I would reboot in case you have not done that. I would reboot and then uh, open up Slack, rejoin the session and uh, just come try to follow along. And uh, you can always reference this later and uh, maybe we could chat later and I could try to assist you further. But starting point is rebooting. It's working now. Uh, Farha, I, I want to make sure everyone, I'm trying to see, and I have a, I, pardon me if I'm mispronouncing some of these names, but I see uh, several people who don't have their thumbs up. Farha, are you okay? It's installing. Thank you. So I, I, I'm confident uh, that if, you're, if you are still installing, um, have mercy on your computer and on yourself and reboot your machines. <laughs> so this is a, uh, like there are some products, like if you were installing Adobe, you know, Creative Suite with Photoshop and Illustrator, um, yeah, I'm getting a message saying the meeting will end in 10 minutes. So if you're getting uh, a message, if you're installing those products, uh, it will take a while, but uh, this should be on a rebooted machine that is, you know, even eight years old, it would take no more than 120 seconds. Uh, on a new machine, it would probably take about 15 seconds, maybe 20 seconds, maybe five. Uh, so it's a very quick install. So if it takes, unless you have a machine that's, you know, 15 years old, which I don't imagine anyone has. I actually have a desktop sitting in front of me that I use daily, uh, which I built in 2000, I think nine. And it's still, I can install this one pretty quickly. So uh, have mercy on your machines and reboot them would be the uh, takeaway for today. It, uh, you're, you'll be grateful, your machines will be grateful. So I'm gonna go ahead and 
because we I see that we're on a time limit here. So while it's installing, I would encourage you to uh, ignore the install and just try to continue watching the screen share. And I can try and we can try to um, discuss further afterwards if you're having issues installing. So I'm going to once again start the screen share. For those who have Thani open, and again, so if you're still installing, I would encourage you to just watch uh, my screen for now so you can catch up afterwards. And again, I will put this video onto uh, YouTube, uh, and then you can go replay this part later uh, once it's uploaded uh, so you can catch up. So I would encourage you to pay attention now so you can make sure you're following the content. So once you're in Thani, uh, here, as soon as we have a file that's open, so if you don't, you can, sit, you can click File, New. And the first thing out of habit, you should always save. So hit Control S. And I'm going and choose where you want to save it. So I'm going to save it under School Courses. I made a folder called Boot Camp. Uh, you can choose to save it wherever you want. Uh, I'm also, I also made a folder called Module 1 because that's where we're at. And I'm going to call it First Program. First underscore program. You can call it whatever you like and then hit Save. This is your very first <laughs> Thani uh, Python program. So, and that one in the upper left is a line number. So here's your first program. Pardon me, but this is the traditional program that is given in every language universally across the world in all textbooks. And it is Hello World. So type that as is. Saw that there was a chat. Yep, David, you are correct. Hello world. Type that exactly as you see it on my screen and I'm zooming in. On a PC, you can zoom by clicking and holding control and then scrolling your mouse wheel. I don't know on Macs. So I'm zooming in for you. You should all easily be able to see that. So notice I typed the word print. Then I have a pair of parentheses. Inside the pair of parentheses, I have a pair of double quotations. And then inside the double quotations, I have text here inside the double quotes. Okay, so I'm going to delete this line, but that's what we have for our basic print statement in Python. Now within Thani, you can, so go ahead and lower your thumbs, please, uh, within Zoom. So within Thani, you can, as soon as you are ready to run your program, there's a green button in the upper left. It says run current script. So you can click that green button. It's the third button, uh, no, the fourth button. That's the green button, if you can see me up here but under view in my Thani. So I click the green button and it says, hello world at the bottom. So if everyone can lower their thumbs, please. Chloe, your thumb is up. Jonathan, Coulson, Layton, Lucas. If you can all lower your thumbs, please. I'm gonna call you again, Lucas, if you can lower yours. Perfect. So all the thumbs are lowered. I would like you to, <laughs> pardon me, I would like you to raise your thumb now if this is working for you and you typed your first program and you have succeeded at it. So we are by no means expert programmers, but you have a fully working program within this IDE of Thani. And if it's not working, feel free to ask a question by raising your hand. But keep the thumbs up, please. So your thumb up right now means that you not only have Thani open and working, but you typed your first program, hello world, and you click the green button, which you can just go click again, right? You can click it again and again and again, and it's rerunning your program. So if you can keep your thumb up, thumb up for me so I can see who has this done. Okay, uh, timer says we have four and a half minutes left. So what can we do now in our four and a half minutes? I'm going to go back to uh, our page. Where's the module? I thought I had this open. Oh, let's try this again, hit back. Okay. Module one. So we made our first program. Uh, what remains, which I think I'm gonna cover this uh, next time, because I'd like to actually 
uh, get you typing some other programs. I don't want to talk about this. So I'm going to scroll ahead. Uh, so, so you can have some fun here. Let's see if I can uh, do this quickly. So here on the screen at the end of module one is I have this uh, program that's called uh, import turtle where basically you can move something around on your screen. So when I open up my Thani, what I'd like to do is, you know what, let me see. I wanna look at the thumbs. Okay. So I'm looking at the time uh, and I have to realize my audience, uh, we have three minutes left, but I want to be able to give you some benefit so y'all can uh, do something before next time. So, yeah, let's see it. And if I can cover this in three minutes, great. So in three minutes, this will end, and I'm going to encourage you to, um, I'll start a new session for anyone who just has questions, but we won't cover new material. Um, and we'll then continue on Thursday because I don't want to uh, make this a burden. So here in, we have three minutes and six seconds. So I'm going to make a new Thani program. I'm going to hit Control S or File Save, and I'm gonna call this um, Square, okay? And I'm going to type some of these commands here. So import turtle. The turtle that we're importing, and I'm not explaining this in detail, which is great. You don't need to have a full explanation to be able to do it. It's gonna allow us to move something around on our screen. So here I'm gonna type up some of these commands. Turtle, turtle dot forward uh, 50. I'm gonna make it 100. And then I just run this so you can see what happens. A line moved across my screen. I'm gonna make it actually, yeah, I'll leave it at 100. Then turtle dot right. 90. What that means is it's going to turn 90 degrees. Then turtle dot forward 100. So check what happens when I run this. Here we went 100. So it basically it's 100 pixels we moved. We turned right 90 degrees. So now we're facing down because we were facing to the right. And then we moved forward again 100 pixels. And again, what is a pixel? What are we doing? This is all a lot of unanswered questions, but try to follow along, uh, just do it at a time. I'm gonna copy these first two commands and then just paste them again and again. And here, if you follow that, uh-oh, I missed a, no, I should have turned right here. So forward, right, forward, right, forward, right, and then forward, right. So here I've made a square. That's pretty quick. Can everyone lower their thumbs? If everyone can lower your thumbs, please. We have a minute and 15 seconds left. Uh, Chloe, great. So what I'd like you to do, uh, Mariam, lower your thumb. Sayub, lower your thumb. Uh, um, and Musab, I'm gonna lower your hand, if you don't mind. Uh, so I'd like if you can, Sayub, I'm lowering your thumb. I can't. If you can raise your thumb and tell me if you, can, if you followed that example and if it in, it in any way makes sense to you. That was very quick. It included very little explanation and I fully recognize that. What I would encourage you to do is test yourself, challenge yourself, read through that module, and we're gonna continue on Thursday, but read through this module and see if you can make both of these. And I think with what I just showed you, I think you can figure that out. Here's one problem to make those four squares. And here's a more challenging one to make this star. All you're gonna do is the turtle forward, the turtle right or left, which is degrees. It moves the number of degrees. And you do need to know pin up and pin down. It just basically picks up the pin so you can move without it marking the screen.